Greetings, Wambui Bahati here. Welcome to Wambui Made It. In this tutorial, I'm going to walk you step by step through how to loom knit this beautiful wavy infinity scarf. Infinity scarves can be worn in so many ways. The one that I'm demonstrating, I'm making out of acrylic yarn, so it is so comfortable and so soft and so cozy against my skin. There are YouTube videos on YouTube that are dedicated just to the many ways that you can wear an infinity scarf. Now, for those of you who love to jump ahead and for those of you who catch things just like that, let me tell you, we're going to do an E-wrap cast on. There are only two stitches involved, the E-wrap and the pearl. We're going to do an E-wrap cast on. And then once we mark our pegs, the same pegs that we purl and e-wrap going in one direction, we're going to purl and e-wrap those same pegs going back in the other direction, and we're just going to keep going back and forth like that until we have at least 60 inches. Now, these were 63 inches. I believe you can go as many as 70 inches long before you decide to cast it off, if you would like to do that. But you know what? Let's just get started. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And I think you're going to have a lot of fun with all the things that you can do with your infinity scarf. And so, with that said, let's just get to it, shall we? These are the things that we're going to need in order to loom knit our wavy infinity scarf. And of course, the first thing this yarn. Now I'm going to be demonstrating with this yarn is by Loops and Threads. It's their Charisma yarn and this color is called Rose Garden. This is an acrylic yarn. It is a number five bulky weight yarn. So that is our yarn. You're going to need at least 300 yards of yarn. So if you're using this particular brand, this one has 109 yards in each skein, you're going to need to pick up at least three of these. And if you're not using this brand, you want to pick up a number five bulky weight, but you want to get at least 300 yards, okay? And then of course we have our hook or our pick, and then we have of course the loom. Now, the loom can be any size loom that you want it to be, peg-wise, that is, as long as it has at least 37 pegs. Okay, now this loom right here is a 3 4 gauge loom. And what I mean by gauge is the space between each peg. If you were to measure the space, which I did to confirm it, you would find that between the center of this peg and the center of this peg, we have three quarters of an inch. Now, I mentioned the gauge because I think this works perfectly for a number five bulky weight yarn. So if you have a loom that is three fourth inches between the pegs, and if you're not sure, just take a little uh, measuring tape and measure from the center, usually that groove from one center of the groove to the next center of the groove right here. If you have a loom that is three quarters of an inch or wider, then you want to use a number five bulky weight yarn. However, if you're working with a loom that is less than uh, three quarters, then I would recommend that you go down to a number four worsted weight yarn. That'll be the yarn that's just a little smaller than this one, and that's going to help that to uh, knit up a little fluffier. So three quarters of an inch gauge and higher bulky. If it's less than three quarters, I say go for the worsted wool or the number four, the one that is just a little bit smaller than this, thinner than this one, okay? And we're gonna need something to mark our pegs. It's gonna be important so that we can have a more relaxed and enjoyable experience because we don't have to worry, oh my goodness, should I be purling? Should I be knitting? So we're gonna mark and that way we know exactly where we are. So we, I usually, recommend these ties like this. These are hair ties. You can, I suppose, get very small rubber bands or something to mark around your pegs. Now, usually 
I say I'm using nail polish and I did use nail polish here where you see the red. This is this nail polish because I used, I usually like to see on top what I'm doing, but I did notice in making these scarves that I had my loom like this a lot. And so I really needed to see what was going on on the sides. So in addition to marking the top, I went ahead and put a band around the pegs where I wanted to purl so that when I have my loom like this, I can see exactly what I'm doing too. It helps me to see where I am. And so we're going to mark. I'm going to show you how to mark your loom so that you know uh, where the beginning is, where the ending is, when to purl, and when to e-wrap stitch. Because there are only two stitches, the purl and the e-wrap stitch. And, oh yes, uh, near the end we're going to need some scissors and we're going to need a darning needle. That's going to be important. And we're going to need some type of measuring device. Because as our scarf grows in length, we want to be able to keep up with where it is. Uh, so we are going to uh, loom knit a scarf that is at least 60 inches in length before we start thinking about taking it off the loom. So as your scarf gets longer, then you want to have this handy so you can see where you are. You do not want it to be less than 60 inches. Okay. So these are the things that we're going to need in order to loom knit our wavy infinity scarf. Now let's talk about preparations. There are two things that we want to prepare before we start the project and that is first of all we want to take our yarn and we want to turn our yarn into a ball. Now I know that there are many people who tell me they're able to uh, knit just by using the yarn as it comes from the skein just by pulling the yarn and I have done that and that works for me 99.99% of the time but there have been times where there was surprises and things that I weren't expecting thin yarns knots in there or just turned out that I was everything just got tangled so one of the things that I always recommend is that you take your skein of yarn or however your yarn comes from the store and you turn it into a ball and that way you will have seen the whole length of your yarn. Okay, so turn it into a ball. And the second thing we want to do is we want to mark the um, our loom because it's going to help us to um, know exactly where we want to purl and where we want to knit and where we want to start and where we want to stop. And so to help with that, I have this little pattern here that has 37 pegs here and this um, this can be downloaded you can download this there's going to be a link if you want to download this PDF um, there'll be a link below this video video where you can download this and it also uh, has the pattern kind of written out but basically what you're going to do is you're going to choose your first and your last peg and for me my first peg is usually that peg that is just to the right of what is the the anchor peg or the peg that is a different color or if you don't have either of those things then just choose a peg any peg to be your first peg and then you want to mark it as the first peg so on my first peg I have this red band here that lets me know that's my first peg and then I did the same thing on my last peg so basically what you're going to do is you're going to choose your first peg and then you're going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, all around until you get to 37. When you get to 37, you're going to mark that as your last peg. Once you have your first and your last peg, then you want to go right beside them and you want to mark for two pearls. For instance, on this, on my loom right here where you see the red polish I know those are pearls and I also mark them with green bands every place I'm going to pearl I've marked not only with the red polish but I have a green band around them and so what this little chart helps you to do is it just helps you to know okay so the first thing we want to do is choose our starting um, peg which we have right here and then the next thing we want is we want two green, which means for me, two pearl. So the green is pearl stitches, so two pearl. And then 
we have four with nothing. And the four that I have nothing on, that lets me know those are the ones that I'm going to do the e-wrap stitch on. And so then I have two pearls. And so if you just follow this little chart around, it'll show you how to mark your pegs. And if you want to just read it out, it'll say, okay, the first peg is an e-wrap, then two pearls, four e-wraps, two pearls, four e-wraps. And so you can do it either way. But this little chart should help you to see very easily how to mark your pegs so that you know what stitch you want to do what um, peg on. Okay, so now that we're prepared, let's get our yarn and start casting on. We're going to start this project like we start most loom knit projects is we're going to start by making a loop. So what we want to do is pull out the yarn, the tail end of the yarn, and we're going to pull it out a little bit longer than normal. So we want it to be about 10, if not even 11 inches. We want an extra long tail here. So we have our tail yarn, and then we have the yarn that's attached to the ball. And that's called our working yarn. We're going to take our working yarn. I'm going to show you how I make my loop. However, however you make your loop is okay. Make the loop the way you know how to make a loop but sometimes people want to know well how do you make the loop and the loop is I take the tail yarn I take the working yarn I cross the working yarn over the tail yarn okay and then I take two fingers stick through that little hole right there and I pick up now I'm holding the tail yarn I let go I have the tail yarn and the working yarn I'm going to be pulling the tail yarn through as I pull both the tail and working yarn in the other direction okay and now I have my loop it is an adjustable loop I'm going to take my loop and I'm going to go to my first peg and put my loop on the first peg all right and I'm going to tighten it right there all right, now I'm going to take both the working yarn and the tail yarn, and I'm going to start wrapping with an E wrap cast on we're going to do. So I'm going to just start wrapping and wrapping and wrapping every peg. As you know, for the E wrap stitch, we're going to wrap. You're going to run out of the tail yarn at some point, but just keep wrapping now with the working yarn and just keep wrapping until we get all the way around to that last or that 37th peg. Okay, so we're just gonna keep wrapping. And, and here we are at the 37th peg. All right, so now, as you know, for an e-wrap stitch, we gotta go back the other way. So we're gonna go around, back around, and we're just gonna wrap on and wrap on until we get back and kind of use your fingers if you need to pull down any of this row to make room for the top row just use your fingers as you go along to help do that and so we're going to go all the way back here and all right all the way back until we get to the first peg all right all right just keep going. I'm going. All right, and now we're here. Of course, we know to hold that until we get our hook and we pull it up and over to secure it so it doesn't unravel. And now, there you go. All right, and so now what we're going to do is pull all the bottoms over the top. That's how we complete our E wrap stitch. Now, the bottoms are going to be very thick along here in the beginning because we have our tail yarn and our working yarn, both. Okay, so it's the bottom yarn for a little while is going to be really thick because it's really two yarns. Okay, and we're just going to go ahead and pull this all around. Pull it up and over. Up and over.
Okay, so now we've done our first cast on row, which was a row of the E-wrap stitch, and now we're getting ready to use our markings, okay? So we're gonna go to where our working yarn is, and our always, um, let me just say this right here, always the first and the last peg are going to be E-wrap. The first and the last, it says this on our pattern here, it says first and last pegs are always E-wraps. So, First and last pegs are always E-wraps. So this is our first peg and we're going to do the E-wrap. We always want to go on the outside and catch it like that. The first and the last peg, we always want to go on the outside bringing it in. Okay, so this is our first peg and it is always an E-wrap. So we're going to go ahead and pull that over. Now we have two pearls. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do these two pearls right here. All right. And another pearl right here. Okay. And now I have four E-wraps. So what I'm going to do, the way I'm doing it is I'm just going to go ahead and wrap, wrap, and then I'm going to go back to the pearls. I'm going to wait till I get to the end to start pulling everything over. Now, if that doesn't work for you, you can do it as you go. But I have found that this works better for me to just, um, just wrap them and then go on to the next pearls and then come back at the end and get it, okay? So we're going to do these pearls right here. That one's a little tight, so I'm going to use my hook to help get that off. Sometimes the first row is like that. And so I'm gonna put my pearl on, my new loop on, and then I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna do the same thing. And let's see, this one's better, okay. All right, so, and then I'm going to wrap for four. So I got one, two, and I'm pulling the row down with the other hand as I go, two, three. Now I'm back at some pearls. So I'm gonna go ahead and do some and then we're going to do one, two, three, four. And then we have these last two pearls on this end. Let me get this up and this up. And here. Okay, and now we're at the last peg and we're going to go in and make sure we bring the yarn on the outside and we're going to pull this up and over. And now I'm going to go back and I'm going to pull up all the bottoms over the top. So this is how I'm going to do mine. If you, you can do your E-wrap stitches as you go, pull the bottom over the top or whatever method you want to use. But I'm, for me, it just feels better to just do the row with the wraps and then go back and pull up everything at the end. So this is how I'm doing mine. And, all right. And, okay. Have this right here. All right, and then we find our working yarn, and we're going to do the exact same thing we just did. We're going to make sure that we start the row by going, bringing the outs, going around the outside like that, and then we're going to up and over. Okay, so now that I've done that, I'm going to go push these up, do these two um, pearls, and it should be a little easier now that we're on the second row. And we're going to go like that, and then we're going to go like this, and then we're going to wrap, and I'm going to be pushing the the ones that I wrap down with the other hand and then wrap like this. And then we're back at two pearls. 
and we're going to cross the yarn over and then we're going to just go underneath and over and scooch it up put the new loop back on and go under and over and scooch it up and put the new loop back on okay and now we have one two three four wraps and we're going to do our pearls here underneath scooch it up put the new and we're going to go up to do this one and now and now we're going to do three so we have one two three and we have one pearl that we want to do right here so and like that and then we're going to do I'm going to be pushing it down with this hand one two three and now we have two pearls over here and so we're going to go ahead and do these so one and like that and then like that all right and then we're going to do one two three four and here back at the pearls and so this is what we're going to do until we have a scarf that's at least 60 inches long okay and let's put it right here okie dokie all right and again, we're going to do the wraps. So we're going to push it down a little. One, two, three, four. And then we're going to go over here to the pearls. I'm going to push the, that up to the top. And we're going to go like this. Okay. And we're going to go like this. Okay. All right. And now we are at the end. We're going to make sure that we go around and we're going to go on the outside. And then we're going to pull this up. Okay. And then I'm just going to go and pull all the bottoms up across. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, and now we are ready to start a new row. And so we're going to do the exact same thing we did. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. I'm going to go away and I'm going to come back once I have several rows uh, loom knitted so that you can see what that looks like. And we'll go from there. Okay, so I will see you in a little while. We're just going to keep doing this for now. So here is what we're looking like after several rows in the beginning. And this is the opposite side right here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to keep going. So we're just going to keep doing this same pattern over and over until we have 60 inches. And so we would just start another row 
Come from the outside, pull the bottom over the top, then go ahead and do our two pearls. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna come back when it's time to add uh, more yarn, when it's time for the second ball or the second skein of yarn, okay? Okay. This is all the yarn that I have left of the first skein of yarn. And so I'm going to join another ball of yarn to this yarn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this original yarn and I'm going to just lay it across like this. I'm going to come in a little closer so that you can see better what I'm doing. I'm just going to lay the, the original like this and I'm going to lay the new yarn like this, okay? And then what I'm going to do, it doesn't matter which one, but I'm gonna take one of these yarns and wrap it around the other yarn. And once I wrap it around that yarn, I'm just gonna turn it up so that it looks like a U, like that, okay? So what did I just do? I took one end, um, the original yarn, the new yarn, I took one of the yarns and I just wrapped it around the other yarn. And then once I wrapped it, I'm gonna turn those two little tail ends up like that to form a U, okay? And then I'm just gonna take this U and I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna just pull on that, those tails. I'm just gonna pull, 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 tight, 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 tight. And then I'm going to pull on this part tight, 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 tight. All right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip off these tails very close to the knot. And I'm going to clip this tail off very close to the knot. Okay. And then I'm going to pull on it tight, tight, tight. Okay. We have something that's very secure here. And so, we're just going to pick up where we left off and start using our new ball of yarn. When you have your scarf that length that you want it to be, you're going to always make sure that the working yarn ends with a row that is on what was our 37th peg on that last peg. You want your working yarn over here. You don't want your working yarn on that first peg. So if you're ending a row, you want to do another row that's going to take you around the loom that's going to allow you to end with your working yarn on your last peg over here. Okay, I just finished loom knitting the last row of my scarf. I know it's my last row because I measured my scarf and I have about 63 inches of scarf. So the way you would measure it is you would take your measuring tape and just go up to the top of the loom, all right? And then just kind of, we don't wanna stretch the scarf, but just kind of run the, the um, tape measure, the length of the scarf and see how long you have it. I do recommend that you don't stop until you have at least 60 inches because with the infinity scarf, you do want to fold it over, be able to fold it over twice, wrap it twice around your neck and less than 60 inches. I think it might be a little more difficult. Uh, if you are a taller person or a larger person, I would recommend going to at least maybe 63 or 65 inches. Um, so, but I do recommend at least 60, okay? So when you have made your scarf the length that you want it to be, the next thing we're going to do is just turn the loom up and we're gonna push everything down. Just push everything, all the loops down to the bottom, okay? And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get our scarf and we're going to pull it back through the loom like this. We're going to find the other end of our scarf and we're going to bring it back through the loom. 
okay? But, all right, so, because, and we're gonna have it on top of the pegs. So this is what we have right now. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to find the opposite end, the other end, of course, so this is one end of our scarf, and so the first end we worked on, we're gonna find that end, and we're gonna bring it up to the end, to this end right here. Now, when we bring it up, we wanna make sure we're not twisting it. We want it straight, we want a straight fold. We're gonna fold it over and we don't want any twists in our scarf. So we just want the, the ends folded, but no twists, okay? So, all right, so we got it folded over. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna find the center of our scarf. How we're going to do that is we're going to look for that single pearl. In that pattern, every there were all the pearls came in pairs. There was two pearls, two pearls, two pearls, except this one single pearl. And that is the center of our scarf where that one single pearl is, okay? And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the other, the center on the other end and we can see by this single line right here, that's that single pearl line, what it looks like on the other side. So once we found that, we have the center. What we want to do now is we want to find one little loop that kind of represents the center, okay? So I got a loop right here, okay? And really this part that we're about to do now, this is, um, I believe the part that could be, um, uh, if, if anything is difficult on this scarf, this is lining up these loops so that we can uh, cast off and our loop will be, and our um, scarf will be closed. So we're gonna find the center here and find the center on this end. Remember, we don't want any twists in it. And we're gonna take the loop here that's just at the top. I have these two loops right here, just at the top of that, um, where is it? The pearl. Okay, we're gonna go right here, yeah. And we're gonna take these loops that are just at the top and we're gonna put them on the center peg. Okay, now once we've done that, we're gonna go to the end, one side, and we're gonna find the end, the end, the end, the very end, because so here's the side and we wanna find a loop that is on the very end there. Okay, so I have a loop that's like on the very end from the side here, this loop right here. I'm gonna take this loop and I'm gonna put it on what was our first peg. So I'm gonna go in the here, keeping this one on that center, we're gonna take this very end, 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 right off the end here, and we're gonna take this and put it on the first peg, all right? Then we're gonna to go to the other side. We're going to do the same thing we're gonna find a loop that is on the very, very edge, very, very end here. Okay, so here is the side here, and so there is the loop that's right here on the side. Okay, see that? All right, so here's our end, and we're taking a loop that's right on this very end right here. We're gonna take this loop, and we're gonna put it on top of what was our last peg, all right? All right, so now what we're going to do is we want to go back and we want to match up. Okay, we want to match up. So now we have these two sides right here, right? So what we want to do is we want to match up all of these loops that are on this edge right here. There should be a peg for it over here and the same for this side. So very carefully what we're going to do is we're going to try to pull out a loop that's on the edge and match it up with one of these pegs, all right? So we're gonna do that. And so we're just gonna very carefully choose a loop that's on the end here and we're gonna put it on top. I'm gonna choose a loop on the end, put it on top take a loop. If you end up with two loops, that's okay, but try to try to just go with one loop. Let's see, one loop here. Okay. A loop here. All right. 
and we got a loop so a loop loop there and we got a loop here all right so we we're, what we want is we want a loop that matches every peg here so let me go to the next one okay loop and loop and loop and loop and loop yeah, yeah so if anything was difficult or in my opinion just a little nerve-wracking is getting making sure that i have a loop for every peg right here so, okay so we have a loop for you all right a loop for you oh i think we got it on this end loop loop and loop okay so we got that side so let's go on this side and see we got to match up loops okay so let's start down here all right and we got one loop here a loop here and just put some loops and a loop a loop a loop a loop a loop a loop okay i think we almost got it loop 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 and loop okay in fact i'm gonna put that loop over there and you're right there okay so this is what we want we want a loop from the other end Again, making sure we didn't twist our scarf at all, but we want it flat over here and we have a loop for every peg. All right, I'm gonna back up again now. Now we want to go pull the bottom loop over the top loop all around. We're gonna go all around pulling the bottom loop over the top loop, okay? So here we go. Once you have the bottoms pulled over the tops, what we're going to do is just put this down for a minute because we want to find our working yarn. We want our working yarn and we want our measuring tape because what we want to do is we want to measure about 60 inches of yarn from our working yarn. So we're just going to measure about 60 inches. We may not need all 60, but just to be safe. We're gonna measure 60 inches. And so here I am at 60 inches and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna cut my yarn right here. All right. And now that I've done that, I'm going to, we're gonna get our darning needle now. Okay, now we need our darning needle and we're going to thread the end that we cut. We're no longer attached to the working yarn. Our scarf is free. <laughs> we're going to take the working yarn that is attached to the loom and we are going to thread a darning needle here. Okay, so once we have that threaded, just pull thread through a bit. Okay, but we're going to be working really with a single layer. Once we've pulled all of the bottoms over the top loops and we have our darning needle threaded and ready to go, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to where the working yarn is here. We're going to take this last loop right here 
and we're going to move it. it. We should be able to move it with just our fingers. We're going to move it on top of the peg, um, yes, the peg that is next door. So we're just going to move that over here like that. All right, we're going to take our needle now and we're going to go in here and we're going to pull our, our yarn all the way through. Okay. Mm -hmm. Pull the yarn all the way through. And then we're going to go to the next one and we're going to pull the yarn all the way through. And we're going to do this for the whole length of our scarf here until we have gone in and we're going to, and we're pulling these relatively tight. We're going to be pulling these pretty tight. We're just going to pull the yarn through. All right. And then we're going to go to the next one, pull the yarn through. Okay. And we're going to do this all around until we get to our last peg. All right. And this is our last one. We're just going to go back into the one next to it. And now we're going to go back into that last one again. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our pick or our hook and we're just going to pull everything off. And now we're free from the loom. Okay, we're just going to find our darning needle here. And we're just going to secure this in right here by just going back in and just pushing it through and around just to secure it, this end. And we're going to go back in here 
All right. All right. All right. And now we're just going to hide some of the length of this. Now what this yarn right here is, is that was that yarn from the beginning. We can just cut that. That was, this was the um, tail yarn that we used when we made our first wrap. We, we were working with the tail yarn and the working yarn. So this one is just ready to be cut off. It's pretty secure. And what we're going to do now is we're going to just going to go through here just to kind of hide some of this uh, yarn before we cut it. So we're going to do something like that. I'm going to pull it through. And what we're going to do now is we're going to just pull and cut it so it'll jump back in there and we won't see the end. All right. And now we're going to do the same with this one. This is that early tail yarn we had. Okay. Now there we have it. We're going to turn it over, see what we have. And we're, all right, so we're going to go in with our fingers and we're just going to press along that seam right there. Just press with our fingers and press. And then we're going to flip it over where the other side is. And we're going to press this with our fingers. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, our wavy infinity scarf is complete.